Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and Ramadan Mubarak. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, speaking to you from the Muslim Media Hub. Thank you for joining me for another episode in which we unlock this, the meanings of the Quran. I'm looking at 30 keys for unlocking the meaning. Uh, today is key number seven. For key number seven, I'm looking at uh, uh, the way in which the Quran has gradually revealed its regulations over time. We spoke more generally about the Meccan, the Medin and Surahs, but now I want to look uh, at how uh, a specific example of the uh, Quranic revelation will illuminate uh, how uh, the uh, gradual nature of the of the uh, regulations were introduced. A, a common example of this is uh, in uh, Surat uh, Al-Baqarah. They ask you about khamr wal maisur. They ask you about drinking and gambling. Qul fihima ithmun kabirun manafi ulin nas. Say in the two things uh, there is uh, great sin and also some benefit uh, for humankind. Wa ismuhuma akbaru min nafahima. Sin is greater than its benefit. Uh, thus, God is detailing his revelations for people so that, you know, they could uh, reflect. So the matter was left at that. It would seem from this uh, as if, uh, you know, it's up to people whether they want, they want to drink alcohol or not. Uh, yes, it has some sin and it's uh, greater uh, than the benefits, but really it seems left to you. And later on, in another surah, so that was the second surah of the Quran, in a later surah, surah 4, surah An-Nisa, in the 43rd uh, verse, uh, then there is a clear directive. Ya ladina amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara. Do not approach the prayer while you are drunk. So this is a clearer directive. Do not uh, approach the prayer while you are drunk. But at the same time, it's not a clear directive that says that drinking is uh, forbidden. It's basically, uh, again, leaving it to people. Okay, it seems that you can drink if you want, but uh, just don't uh, approach the prayer when you are drunk. Hatta ta'alamu ma Until you know what, what you are saying. So when you sober up, that's when you can pray. But then, eventually, in the fifth chapter of the Quran, in the 90th verse, it says, Ya yaladina amanu inna malcham O oh, you who believe, uh, certainly drinking and gambling and uh, the uh, using the altars uh, for in which people dedicated their sacrifices and uh, the divining arrows by which they divided up the meat uh, in favor of the gods and so on or using the gods' guidance. So according to this verse, now all of this is from uh, the, the filth of the uh, works of the devil. Fajtanibu. Uh, stay away from it uh, so that you may be successful. Uh, there is a more clear directive here that you are to uh, stay away from drinking and, and gambling. Uh, so we can see here a sort of gradual uh, descent of the regulations. Now, bear in mind that these are all Medinan passages, which means that in the whole Meccan phase, uh, for 13 years as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was there, for uh, some period, perhaps a, a year or more, in Medina, Muslims were there, they were praying, and uh, they were good Muslims, but they might have been drinking alcohol. Uh, it was not prohibited in the religion. And then for some time, some people might have continued drinking alcohol because there was no clear prohibition. And then gradually and eventually, they stopped uh, drinking alcohol altogether. A clear command came in the fifth chapter of the Quran, which is said to be one of the last chapters of the Quran. Uh, to be revealed. So what does this mean? It, it means that when we're reading the Quran, we have to be aware that uh, there are some situations which are described in the Quran. You can see Muslims on the ground uh, behaving, acting. They're good Muslims, but they're not never necessarily following all of the regulations because all of the regulations are not revealed yet. It also gives us an insight into the tolerance that God has for human beings. Because if something like drinking alcohol, which leads to so many bad things, as we know, and of course, not to talk about the diseases that result from drinking alcohol and, uh, you know, imbibing other, other uh, intoxicants, God is tolerant. God is allowing good Muslims to remain and uh, to, you know, uh, do some things which later on God knows that he is going to uh, prohibit but he lets it go for the time being. That gives us an insight on how we might introduce Islam gradually to people. Now, we, of course, as seasoned Muslims, uh, we have to follow all of the regulations without fail. Uh, of course, we might fail, but it should be our intention to follow it all. But when we are speaking to others about the religion of Islam, we don't have to pile on the whole body of regulations to the, uh, upon them all at once. You know, this is a long list of uh, do's and this is the long list of don'ts. It might be too much for the people. It might overwhelm them and drive them away, away from the religion of Islam from the very get-go. So it's better to introduce things to people 
in a gradual way, without hiding anything, without fudging anything, answer the questions as uh, they may ask them, uh, but uh, don't go overboard to give them the whole list uh, all at once. Give them time to grow, give them space uh, to learn uh, the new uh, religion. So that's an example of how uh, the revelations were given gradually, and knowing this will help us to understand the Quran better. Otherwise, uh, we could mislead ourselves. We could go to a verse like the one we mentioned from Surah Al-Baqarah. It says, uh, they ask you about drinking and gambling, saying the two of them are a, a sin, uh, but uh, also some benefit, but the sin is greater. And one might con uh, conclude from that, oh, it looks like the Quran is permitting us to drink alcohol. So that means then we have to be aware of the contents of the Quran more generally and not uh, rush to judgment by just simply looking at one verse of the Quran, because there could be another verse which gives more details and which might have come later and uh, which uh, therefore is uh, even more applicable to our present uh, circumstances. And we need to know that so that we can put it all together and we can uh, please God uh, by doing what he himself has regulated for us. It is important, therefore, as a key to unlocking the meaning of the Quran for us to know uh, that the Quran was revealed gradually and more so that the regulations were given gradually uh, to the Muslims. And so we should not uh, jump upon an earlier uh, regulation just in case there is uh, a later one that we should know about. So how might we know about all of these? By reading the Quran carefully, by reading related verses, by checking the indices uh, of the Quran for related words and meanings and, uh, you know, co looking at a topical arrangement of the Quran so you can see all of the verses that deal with a particular topic all in the same place. Now, there are books that give you uh, a topical arrangement and there are too many to mention, but you might find them in bookstores wherever Muslim books are, are sold. Uh, you can do your own uh, internet search for uh, a topical arrangement uh, of the Quran. That is my key to unlocking the meaning of the Quran. Tomorrow, uh, we'll deal with another key, and that is uh, the key uh, to recognizing uh, the uh, concept of abrogation in the Quran and uh, to see uh, how uh, that concept might have been misused and how we should guard ourselves against misu misusing uh, that concept. But more about that tomorrow. Join me again. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, speaking to you from the Muslim Media Hub, saying Assalamu Alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. This Ramadan, we're making history together. Behind me is the building you helped us purchase for the sake of Allah for the establishment of the Muslim Media Hub. Uh, we started filming our television program here called Let the Quran Speak, and we're training the youth to produce other such shows and videos for social media uh, so that we can present the message of Islam to the wider world. Uh, this Ramadan, you can help us to raise $100,000 for the sake of Allah Azawajal. Uh, please go to our website, muslimmediahub.com. May Allah bless you and all of your loved ones this Ramadan and forever. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, saying Assalamu Alaikum, peace be with you, and Ramadan Mubarak.